Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, July 22nd of 2019. Not sure exactly what I'm going to talk about. That might be a good sign for you to uh, stop watching. I uh, wanted to bring up the front page here of CNN. I haven't read the article, but it says Trump says that a budget deal has been reached. Thank God. Um, I guess it's been reached with Congress. Maybe it's just been reached with himself. But having him as uh, president is, you know, he's going to use everything he has in order to get what he wants to get. Uh, you know, the, the deficit, uh, everything. He's just going to... Uh, a grocery store employee found missing. A, a, a grocery store employee <coughs> went missing. I haven't read the article yet. Ten years ago, and they found him behind the store's cooler. Unbelievable. His parents told the police he'd been acting irresponsibly, possibly because of medication. Workers removing shell, shells and coolers found a former discovered the body behind one of them. A former employee who was reported missing in November of 2009. Uh, wow. <clears throat> you know, I, I mentioned it in the past in several, I'm not sure if it was in uh, YouTube blogs. Well, I tell you, this was not a good idea. I CNN was bugging me about would I please turn on, you know, unblock the uh, block that I had on their advertising. And this is, you know, Okay, I mean, okay, this is this gigantic thing up here that keeps flashing. Okay, I don't have a problem with this. these little things. That we never pay, people don't really pay attention to them, you know, these things on the, and, made, you know, they got this thing in here, they got this one here. I mean, they're CNN. And then down here, at, they have stories and things which are actually here. This is all paid content. And this, I don't think you can block, actually. I think, I mean, even if you have the blocker on, because the way it's, pretty, I mean, I'm going to go back and uh, block. I may just find, uh, I may just permanently block CNN and find my news from some other site. Anyway, as I've mentioned many times, I spent 30 years working hospital security. And for part of that 30 years, also, in the very beginning for years, I worked a second contract security job at Burns, Pinkerton, Wells Fargo, uh, and different companies. Uh, one year we saved all the money from the part-time job and uh, we went down, we drove down to Mexico and drove, you know, Chihuahua, Durango, Mazatlan, I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. And then we came out through Nogales and what have you. But uh, in the past, I've mentioned, I'm not sure so much in these YouTube videos, but I've mentioned in uh, uh on my blog, my written blog that I, I started in 1982 and blogged just about every day, forever. Um, 
know, I mentioned well, there'll be a story like um, somebody found, you know, somebody was missing, and then in a hotel, I remember one time it was in a hotel, somebody's body was found after weeks or months or something or other. Remember another one? Where was that located? Uh, just, and then actually, I, I worked at a hospital. I, I came in on the day shift at a hospital. And uh, I uh, working in hospital security. And I'd never, I'd, I'd heard him paging before, like, you know, you know, patient so-and-so, please go to your room or whatever. But I came in, you know, and they paged over the public address system. And then, but later they paged again, they paged again. I never, I'd never heard that and whatever. And I said to, uh, you know, the off-doing uh, security or whatever, what happened? Or what, why are they, uh, oh, they said, well, this um, patient, the 6th East, uh, on 6th East, which was right across, uh, our security offices were uh, on the other side of 6th. And I can't, it's been so many years, the 1970s, I can't remember now. Uh, a patient left, and the nursing service called us, and we looked through the hospital, couldn't find him. We drove around the hospital, couldn't find him. And they called the um, patient um uh, Called the patient's home, asked, told the family that he had left the hospital, and to please call the hospital when he showed up, or whatever. And the people said, "Well, he hasn't showed up yet," and they said, "Well, call the hospital. You know, he needs to come back into the hospital." And uh, then about that time, now this was like. I think this was even on the second shift, before the midnight shift came on. That so it was like before. Uh, can't remember our hours exactly. And before to say before ten o'clock, and so the second shift had looked, the uh, third shift had looked, and then our shift had just come on duty. And then uh, right away. One of the a patient on six E's, a retired Kansas City, Missouri police officer, went to the uh, showers, and of course there were numerous shower areas, you know, on six E's, and there the patient had hung himself, and uh. uh I ended up being on, because I was the day shift supervisor, and for other reasons, I ended up being on a committee, well, it wasn't exactly a committee, there was a hospital director of nursing, so she was the one, I was there, and then the other person where it was the nurse, and I really don't think she should have been there, she was a nurse who was on duty, the supervising RN on that unit, and so this was the three of us, to come up with a policy, come up with a new policy on how things were to be, you know, be handled. And uh, when something like, when a patient turned up missing or whatever. Uh, anyway, I felt bad for the nurse because she blamed herself. The patient had left a note. And I don't remember now exactly what the note said. Uh, but, you know, the, the note said something like, you know, I'm, I'm just so tired of this and I just don't want to be in the hospital and I, I'm just I'm just leaving. I'm tired of all this or something, something to that effect. Once his once he, you know, he was found that he had committed suicide. Then the nurse, oh, my God. That was, you know. That was a suicide note. She thought, you know, he was leaving the hospital, going home, or whatever. I can't remember a whole lot of, you know, I think that I, I think the note was read or copied and slid to me or whatever for the thing, and I looked at it and, and I told her that I would have, you know, thought the same thing that it was 
you know, that he, the patient had left the hospital. But anyway, these other incidents that uh, happened uh, that you see on the news from time to time, when I worked security at the hospitals that I worked at, and over the 30 years I worked at one, two, three, four, five, six, six hospitals, I think. Well, then after I retired and I did the 2000 census, and in Florida I worked at a, I was in charge of the contract security for a, another hospital there or whatever, but uh, all the jobs that I ever, and I worked, you know, other jobs, security jobs. I, you know, I checked every, not when somebody was just missing, every day if, now sometimes you work someplace where they don't, where, you, where you're absolutely, uh, you might as well be handcuffed to a desk or something or rather, you know, uh, or sometimes you can't do what you should, you know, be able, what you should do because of like that mall security that I worked in Florida or whatever, that was terrible. The dispatcher would, you know, call you and say, okay, time to tech, check the, the uh, Coke vending machines and uh, time to uh, check the telephones and the, all the telephone things and the parking garage where people could pick it up and it would automatically dial, you know, call the dispatch. And I mean, they would, it would be, I would have things that I thought needed to be checked. And uh, I, I, in fact, I think I mentioned one time a thing where on the midnight shift at the mall, there's this guy suspicious there or whatever. And I, I was checking him or whatever. And uh, uh, I, I called, I to called dispatch. There was just three of us working, one inside the mall that was closed one dispatching when actually we took that was a supervisor you know whatever and then me anyway i called the supervisor and i said put such and such a camera on this guy and watch him because well because i said watch him you know but i actually didn't intend to go very i was just going to go someplace where he couldn't see me and i'd have been watching him in the vehicle you know also because i just felt because he was uh too friendly too cooperative, too, you know, shook my hand and all that. And I thought, okay, I've seen this type of, I've seen this type of behavior before. But anyway, the uh, supervisor called me, it's, you know, three o'clock in the morning or whatever. The, and he calls and says, uh, time to check the, the uh, Coke machines. And I said, uh, I'd rather, I'm going to keep an eye on this. No, you have to check the, it's a lot, it was on a checkoff list. You have to do this. And I said, well, make sure you keep an eye on this guy with the camera. So I go check the Coke machines real fast. Come back. The guy's gone. He's written all over her car or something. I forget, you know, uh, you're a bitch and I loved you so much or the crap that I've seen <sighs> happen so many times. Um, so anyway, the... Uh, I can see if I can change cameras with this thing running. Oh, I can. Let's see. Yeah, okay, good. Um, this chair is going down on me a little bit. Then there's a hydraulic system on it. <laughs> I'm sinking. Um, anyway, the supervisor hadn't put the camera on the guy. Uh, but anyway... Every place that I ever worked, you know, I checked, you know, when I did my rounds, I checked everywhere. Right at the, you know, I go, I opened up area, electrical panel rooms. I made sure the doors were locked. I, you know, I opened up, went into electric back, you know, uh, because on these people that were found, of course, this is later on, but I mean, just common sense. No, those doors are locked, you know, electrical panel rooms, air handling rooms are locked. But sometimes the maintenance guys who add keys, or it could have been a closet that housekeeping put, you know, their stuff in and got their supplies out. You know, sometimes the door doesn't close good. But I check, you know, I would check all those areas. I go back into areas and and stuff, and these other people don't. 
But anyway, what? how sad these people, can you imagine? Uh, your child, your family, it could be a you know, husband and wife, it could be anybody, you know, goes missing. And these people, their son was missing for 10 years. If I'd have been them, every time I'd be driving someplace, you know, if I'd see somebody, you know, that look, I, I would think, you know, is that, is that him, you know? Uh, it's really tragic. Did you see the uh, North Carolina dad who was uh, out in the water and he got hit by a wave and it broke his neck? And everybody says, you know, that, uh, okay, well, here he is, you know. Anyway, the, the wave hit him and broke his neck. Everybody says, God, I hate this. I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of the hell with CNN and their well, I'll just turn the, I turn the ad blocker back on. How come they're not smarter, you know, than... Anyway, look at this guy. This is the, the man who was killed by the wave. And, uh, you know, here's his family. He, they apparently, and here's apparently a, a special, uh, could be, no, I think it's, I don't know if they adopted all of these kids or one or two of their kids or whatever, but I mean, what a tragedy, you know. I think I signed the back of my, uh, here in the United States, you can sign the back of your driver's license for organ donation. But I have, I know I've told my family that, uh, you know, donate my, donate my entire body if they want to, to medical research if that'll help. Donate my organs if they're, if they're any good. I'm 78 years old. I'm not sure how good. Working uh, hospital security, hospital security always, at every hospital I've worked at, uh, were the ones who released, you know, bodies or whatever, and we had procedures to, to make sure that the body wasn't released to the funeral home until if any, you know, organ donations were made and, you know, like eyes. Uh, the eye people would show up really fast if you had donated, you know. They'd show up really fast and do that. And then the other people would uh, show up that do all the other stuff. Uh, they were really PR-oriented. I guess they wanted to get... You know, they'd show up and then they'd ask security or nursing or whatever, what do you want to see, you know, the body after? I guess because it's not, you know, but I, I never wanted to. Uh, but they wanted to do that in order to get people to, uh, you know, donate uh, organs and things like that. It's really a shame more people don't do that. So it's. Um, so what did I want to talk about? Um, I've got my two monitors going both in 1080p. This is a 4K monitor, as I've mentioned before. Uh, what I need to do is get another 4K monitor. Because the dragging back and forth does not work. Having this in 4K and the other one in 1080p. Now, once or twice I did get the settings right where it worked most of the time. But then something new was installed or whatever and it just doesn't. Uh, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. but. I'm using Manicam for this uh, this recording. Um, I still cannot get OBS Studio to work correctly for me, except in Linux. If I boot into Linux, this is a dual boot computer. I can boot into Linux, or I can boot into Windows 10. If I boot into... Um, 
Linux, OBS works fine for me in, uh, in Linux. So, um, my fish tanks are still going. Uh, my daughter and son-in-law in Washington, D.C. are not because of anything I did. I'm not even sure they knew that I'd set up a tank here. Uh, they are going to, because they recently, a year or two ago or whatever, moved into a, not a new house, but a new house for them before they were renting in the Washington, D.C. area. And uh, anyway, my daughter, LaDonna, she takes fantastic pictures. I think I should get credit for that because uh, I was always into photography. And uh, every time I bought myself a new camera, I would give my old camera to one of my four kids. Finally, they all had enough cameras. And anyway, LaDonna uh, takes fantastic pictures of with her iPhone, it just goes to show you that, you know, it's not the camera. That's the way I've always, you know, I have to have a new camera, you know, the latest camera that I can afford, you know. There's some I'd love to, like to have, but I can't afford them. But uh, she just takes, it's who, you know, and you can see that because you can go back and you can look at old, you know, photographs taken in the early days or whatever, and you see some photos that are, uh, you know, a lot of photos that were just taken by, and they were using inexpensive. The camera I had that I loved really the most was a uh, twin lens reflex camera, square format, 120 or 240 film, and you looked down through it. And I just loved that format and took some pretty good pictures. But my daughter, she takes Anyway, rambling. Damn your rambling. Um, anyway, she's in, when they're at their new house. Uh, she's planted all kinds of flowers, and there's butterflies coming, and all different kinds of birds and everything to the yard because she's put out different kinds of things that you know, milkweed, and I don't know what all that attract butterflies and birds and all that type of stuff. So. She's got all types. They can sit in their dining room, kitchen area, I guess, and look out and see all these beautiful birds and stuff. So on their own, they've decided to get an aquarium. And uh, I think they're talking about getting a 20-gallon aquarium, which is what I have over over there. Um, I guess I could switch. You're not going to get a very good look at it, but ah, that's okay. You've seen it. Um, so everything's working good with I'm up I'm uh, running Windows Pro Insider uh, 18941 Windows is working working good for me right now I have two cameras hooked up you saw the Brio there that's on a tripod and this is the C920 both USBs by the way, I don't know why, uh, luckily this time I checked to make sure audio was working and everything, and this microphone was not not recognized, and luckily I, otherwise I'll be making this video and then there'd be no audio, and I hate that when I put, I, yeah, actually, I, I know it seems like I'm not putting work into it, but I put the work into something and then there's no audio or something. Um, uh, so, um, still things are not going, I'm still unhappy with, oh, that's interesting, I just got the audio here. <laughs> So I need to go back in the settings and uh, make sure. Hmm. Well, let's do that. Uh, system sound. 
Okay, there we are. Okay, output device. Oh, okay, I see. Output device is the sound blaster speaker. Down here, the input device is the microphone. Okay, now we got that right. Um, you know, uh, hate to everybody all. I think all the YouTubers complain about YouTube. Uh, all the YouTube producers. Um, I don't do that great of material. But I just don't think they're pushing, you know. I was one of the very, I was doing YouTube, I was doing streaming video before before there was a YouTube, before there was a CUC me, before the, you name any of the services that did, I was doing streaming video. I was doing streaming video, I know, just about before anybody else. I mean, you don't ever want to say I was the first one to, you know, fly an airplane or I was the first one to have, have a balloon that go up or I was the first one to invent the telephone or because there'll be, you know, stories of oh no somebody in russia did it or somebody in france did it or uh whatever but uh, well i know i was because i was doing streaming video having to use my computer and i didn't have as, as you know they weren't as powerful back then because people would uh i had chat going and uh video going and people would log in and go to the chat room and they'd say I've never I've never seen anybody live you know you know live on the internet I don't think that I think this was before the World Wide Web yeah it would have been before the World Wide Web I've never seen anybody uh, like you're not live and I yeah this is you know this is live no I mean that's not you know it just set up something no uh, Hold up two fingers, you know, hold up, you know. And back at that time, the only thing that I know of, and I was searching around and everything, was there was some business someplace that had a camera aimed at a coffee pot, and there was someplace else that had a camera that was aimed at a, I think, a vending machine. So I've been doing this a long time, and uh, Amazon's system is just set up to push out certain types of video that I guess make them money or that advertisers want to advertise on or whatever. So, um, let's see. So you can see for the last 28 days in, uh, YouTube commission or whatever, I have earned $19.24. I was up to $30. You know, it worked up gradually to $30 a month. And they pay you when you get $100 a month in commissions. So it would take, it was taking me, you know, three months before I would get about $100. And it was sometimes, you know, like I was getting about like $30 a month. So it didn't quite make, I didn't hit $100 have to go another month. Now it's down to $19 a month. So I'd have to go like five months before I get, you know, $100 or whatever. Um, of course, it helps if you have subscribed and if you hit the bell thing. And if you hit, the, then you're supposed to get notified. But we're not sure. A lot of YouTubers say no, yet, you know, I mean, YouTubers that have thousands of subscribers, maybe hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and a lot of them say that they're people, the people that have subscribed to them, and uh, you might go and check to make sure you actually, because I saw a YouTuber the other day, and uh, he said what he was finding was that people who had hit the subscribe button it was unsubscribed. They and they said, you know, hey, no, we didn't. You know, I subscribed to you. I didn't unsubscribe. 
so I don't know what's going on with their system. But um, anyway, it's and I started in uh, 2005 when YouTube started, and I have yet to get to 3,000 subscribers. But that may not be their fault. That just may be that a lot of you are not really interested in this type of content that I do. Um, what did I, something popped in my mind and popped out of my mind right away. Um, of course, my content changes. This, I guess, would be my blogging content. Sometimes I tell stories that, are, you know, real stories. Well, I told you one, didn't I, about the suicide at a hospital. Um, I... Um, What regrets do you, let's, let's consider this story time or something. I'm looking at the wrong camera. Let me see if I can change cameras again without messing things up. Change to the Logitech Rio camera. What regrets do you have? What regrets do I have? Um, starting back in the beginning, I regret that when I ended up having hearing loss, I I had a infection hearing and I had an infection on my ear or something. And back then, uh, the doctor that we had came to the house, and I uh, he was a D or an OD, he was not an MD. That didn't make any difference. MDs came too. Just, um, but he wouldn't show up for two or three days. And I, I go in door to you know go in to people's homes. Yeah, it would take some time. But maybe he was a drinker too, or maybe he, I don't know. But he didn't. There were several times when I had pain in my side, and my mother was convinced that it was a appendicitis, and that I needed my by the time he got there, I'd probably had a bowel movement or something, and I didn't have pain in my side. Thank goodness. Um, but then I had an ear infection or whatever, and a lot of pain and whatever, and they called him, and he didn't show up for two or three days. And then he came and he said, uh, well, if I'd, have, if I'd have got here the other day, I would have lanced it. I guess lanced the ear, I don't know. At least he didn't bleed, you know, didn't want to bleed me or whatever. I'm not that quite that old, but anyway, then, uh, so I, he didn't have to do anything. I guess maybe gave me a prescription. But then I ended up with hearing loss in both ears, quite severe. And then the school that I, Catholic school that I went to, uh, they had a hearing test. We'd all go, well, one, not the entire school at the same time. One class would go to the cafeteria or to the library, sit at the long tables and put headphones on and uh, they would do the testing and right away I could see all the other kids marking. I tried, I, and the only time, I never copied off of anybody even when going to community college or whatever, I never copied off anybody ever. Uh, I should with my grades. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't have to, go, wouldn't have to go to summer school five years in a row. Um, but anyway, I was trying to copy off, I think maybe especially the second year, because the first year I think I was, all the kids are marking something, and then I get this thing to take home, sort of like a computer thing, you know. And even I could, you know, even if somebody, from, I'm looking at it, eh, you know. And then too, when I was in you know, the second year, same thing. My parents never did anything about it. Can't blame them when I, when I got grown up and got a job that had health insurance and all that type of stuff. I never went and had my hearing, and it was bad, and I knew it was bad. 
but so let's see one I would because I remember later in elementary school I guess the kids were doing well I was in the class and they were doing phonics and whatever you know we had learned to read and I was a fantastic reader not a great speller because I guess of the hearing but I remember being in the class and the kids were sounding things out and I'm sitting there listening and watching what's how you know because they're it, it all sounded sort of the same to me I didn't hear any I didn't hear I don't know anything about how they taught it then and they probably have changed I just didn't hear that difference so I wish that I had like when I needed when I knew I needed glasses in grade school I told my parents I need glasses they said well, you know, if we get your glasses you got to wear them I'll wear them and I did I wish I'd have got I mean I took the thing home to my parents but I wish I'd have said hey I need to have my ears tested I'm not sure I knew much about you know but anyway that'd be one thing because that messed up I mean that caused problems for the rest of my life um, so there would be that I spent I went to an all-male Catholic high school my regret would be that I didn't go to a co-ed you know co-ed high school uh, I went to the all it was all Catholic high school called a 55 CROTC that was like military all the time uh, but I wish I'd have gone to a co-ed you know uh, high school definitely oh so much I watch sometimes when I see one of these movies, that past time at Ridgemont High, or some movie about, or even maybe a TV show or something about high school kids or whatever, and I'm thinking, oh my God, high school girls, you know, sitting in a class with their cheerleading uniform on and whatever. Oh, I wish uh, <laughs> wish I had gone to a co-educational high school. So that'd be a regret. Um, I do not regret uh, that I um, shortwave listening was my hobby starting in 1955. So I would have been, that was the year I started high school. Well, I think before I started high school, the last year of grade school, I was listening to shortwave radio, and I, I became a shortwave listener. I mean, I put out a monthly publication for years. It went out on shortwave radio and all the, I did one of the, well, the first one that I know of, space communications column when Sputnik 1 was launched with the frequencies of the satellites and apogees and perigees and I uh, did a weekly radio program that was broadcast two or three times a week over WRUL Radio New York worldwide to Europe, Africa, and Latin America. I was just, you know, but I did spend way too much time doing that. And then later, you know, I in my life I thought, you know, maybe I should have been a little more social. I think I have a family member here. Hang on a second. Okay, I am back. That was my daughter, Hillary. And uh, <clears throat> she wanted to know if we wanted anything from Brahms. And I went, I rode with her down there to pick up a few items. So I just had a, you can get a bag of burgers. And uh, so we got a bag of burgers. So I had one hamburger and... And they have, they always have nice bananas. I got some bananas and got some ice cream bars, not for me. And I got a giant potato for making a baked potato. I think that's it. And uh, 
So, hope everything is now working. Every time I change, you know, stop something or uh, <laughs> install something. Uh, like I mentioned the other day, there is, uh, I have a Chrome box and it works great. But there's a new one out. It's only like $300 and it has a new uh, chip in it and apparently a kick ass. And you can also use, uh, in addition to Chrome apps, you can use Android apps. And with my Chromebox, <clears throat> when they added that feature, it's not available for that, for my unit. So, anyway, I came back and I just had uh, the hamburger and one banana and started this back up and I think I was talking about regrets I'm gonna stop that subject and come back to it sometime except to say where was I uh, on the shortwave listening or whatever I put way too much time in that I should have but I learned a lot and it you know worked on my brain uh, the shortwave listening you back in those days It'd be easier nowadays with the communications receivers and everything they have. But, you know, back in those days, uh, I learned geography, of course. I'm not sure what geography does me with, like, Belgian, Congo, French, Equatorial, Africa, Katanga, and those kind of play, you know. But uh, I think it, it, you know, triggered a little something in my, in my brain, getting me to thinking about things. I could tune in radio stations and I could, you know, from the music, tell you probably where the station was, you know, whether it was a Guatemalan or a Brazilian or, you know, all types of stuff. So I think it, I made a lot of friends worldwide. I, there's a, now here it is, I think. Uh, hang on a second. Uh. Nope. Uh, wrong book. Anyway, I thought this was the history of shortwave listening, but it's not. It's, uh, I don't even have an FZ300. I, but, you know, I have an FZ200. Anyway, in the uh, book, I'm written a history of shortwave listening or whatever it is. I mentioned in there uh, numerous places throughout it. So it was, it got me, I think, I was one of the founders of the People to People organization uh, because of the stuff that the shortwave organization that I belonged to and helped found and all that type and ran for years and uh, stuff that we did, world friendship through shortwave and all that type of stuff uh, when... <coughs> Uh, the founder of Joyce Hall of Hallmark Cards wanted to set up the first people-to-people -people organization. I was one of the people he called on in Kansas City, and he called on industry leaders and uh, what would you call those people? You know, and there I was. You know, all the rest of the people there were and all the men were there in nice suits, and I was there in slacks and a sport coat. <clears throat> um, and that was because of shortwave listening, pen palling, and whatever. Uh, so, um, you may not be familiar so much with people to people organization, but I bet wherever you are in the United States or in the world, if you're in a city of any size, your city is probably a sister city to another city in another nation, and that's through the people-to-people -people organization. Uh, 
I tried um, the meeting that Joyce Hall, founder of Hallmark Cards and this people-to-people uh, -people organization, it was held at the Muehlbach Hotel in Kansas City, Missouri. And there were, I'm guessing, 15 of us or so there. Of course, the news media was there and people taking pictures, all that kind of stuff. And we all signed, which I thought was kind of strange. We all signed the charter for the corporation, you know, Missouri Corporation. And I, I thought it was kind of strange that like 15 people were signing, like, shouldn't it just be, you know, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, uh, sergeant of arms or something like that. And, uh, then later on, I can't remember because that was back in, oh, I think the 60s. Uh, I don't know if I got a phone call or if I got a letter from them saying, uh, we made a mistake, so we're reincorporating. I forget exactly what it was. We're reincorporating over again. And I thought, yeah, you're, you had too many people too many board of directors or something or other so you needed to cut it down or whatever but anyway i oh last few years a few times i've gone to the people to people organization in kansas city missouri and thought okay they'll you know for the history of it uh they'll show the first you know meeting in the uh, Muehlbach hotel and there'll be a picture and I'll probably be back in the background someplace or whatever. And I thought, and I, I looked, I couldn't find any, not even if they re and if redid the thing, I couldn't find it, you know, so a little bit of history changed or history lost or something. Uh, anyway, uh, I think I have probably done enough. Well, wait a minute. Let's, Let's play a little bit of this. Uh, let me put 25 here. I'm not sure if you can hear me or not over the, because uh, I, I don't think I adjusted the uh, background or whatever you call it. So I'm not sure if you can hear me over it or not. I did something like this before and I was talking during Civilization Six or something and nobody could hear what I was saying. This is uh, Caesar's Casino a Microsoft uh, program and uh, it's fun but I end up occasionally spending like two dollars and nine uh, two ninety two ninety nine or something for uh, a few dollars or chips or whatever when it gets uh, and I shouldn't do that I mean I shouldn't do that now, you don't have to pay. I mean, you can just wait, and then every day they, uh, you know, add more or whatever. But there's some there's been a few times when, <clears throat> and they kind of overdo this thing popping up on, uh, you know, spend, I th think they kind of overdo it a little bit. Come on, another clover, another clover. Well, too late now.
Here we go. Now you get to see. Okay, many. So you see, I get 52 million right there. Now I'll get a thing here to pick, and I can get some more. Okay, where is the, what do you think, the most spins? Uh, okay, well, that's better than one. Okay. If this was only real money, I could get a yacht or I could move to New Zealand. I wouldn't move to Australia. Everything down there is poisonous and deadly. Okay, enough of that. Uh, thank you very much for... Well, hang on here a second. You know, somebody said I did a political thing uh, video a while back. And I, at the same time, because I talk about n numerous subjects, I mentioned, you know, that, you know, just not not getting the subscribers... Um, out of my mind again. Um, oh, Hillary was over here. She said, I think it's not X Q copter. I think it's just Q copter. Okay, I, I'm not sure. So let, let me uh, edit it. Oh, somebody said... Uh, Left a comment. No, that's not it. Okay. Okay, not X. Okay. A Q-copter. I think, let's see. I think that's it. She ought to know she bought it. Um... Anybody, anyway, I guess in the video I said, you know, hey, well, the same, sort of same thing I said a while ago. And somebody said, well, if you weren't liberal, you know, left wing or whatever, if you were, I forget, I'm exaggerating what he said, you know, person said or whatever, but if you weren't left wing communist, liberal, you know, whatever, you would, uh, if you were true American, he actually didn't say, I mean, I'm exaggerating, you know, whatever. Um, then you'd get more people, you know, if you weren't giving fake news or something. He didn't say that either. Uh, because he said, um, he said, your viewers are all older, you know, men or whatever. I don't think he even said men, just older. And uh, let's see. I think I tried to find it the other day, analysis. Uh, my viewers are actually young males, very few females. And uh, watch time subscribers. Uh, Reach viewers, interest viewers. Let's see. I couldn't find it the other day either. They have a tremendous amount of statistical information here. <laughs> I should pay more attention to this. Let's see. Maybe this is 
comments, transcriptions, copyright. Now, anyway, you just have to give up on trying to show you. But actually, uh, my viewers are mainly young males and mainly in the United States, you know, or Canada or, you know, a few in Australia, that type of stuff. English, well, UK. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope this whole thing worked out okay. When, when I try things, switching cameras, switching microphones, uh, whatever I do, a lot of times it does not turn out well.